Welcome along to this video in which we will explore some of the benefits of using Caddy's AEC build tool. So in terms of time saving and maybe presentation improvements and, and just simplification of things. So stripping back the amount of work that one needs to actually involve in in order to get a scheme across. Here we've got a, a drawing. It's just a, a, a little simple piece uh, just to, to demonstrate some of the tools here and within it we, we've got some possible setups for the information that might be needed at certain times. So a low detail version of the drawing for instance where we might want to just put this over to the client and we can put in our symbols, blocks, everything, things like furniture and kitchens and sanitary ware and so on and label the, the rooms up. We're focusing very much on the 2D content here. So many times I, I get asked by people whether it's possible to to do something quickly just in 2D. They say I'm not interested in drawing in three dimensions, not interested in modeling and I mean they may already even be using a, a 2D system and then um, a sketch modeling system for instance uh, and think well I'm, I'm doing things there okay but there are other alternatives there are possibilities and here we're going to look at the possibilities offered by the caddy AEC tools so we have a as I say a, a fairly rudimentary uh, plan outline it's just a simple two-line wall with a nice fill in there just to give us uh, that sort of effect which we can print out using transparencies and so on if we wish uh, we have some basic overall dimensions. It, it gives what a would-be client just the, the basic information that they need to, to figure out whether it's working for them. When we move over to the, uh, the medium detail uh, representation here, uh, we think, okay, well, that's changed. Well, there's rather more information on that. We have, uh, for a start off, we've got more information in terms of the dimensions. We've got the, the walls which are hatched, they seem to be multi-component walls here. We've even got things like architraves on the doors. And just looking around, we've got some distinction between the solid walls now and stud walls. And then if we go to the high level representation, we can see that there's yet more information in terms of the dimensions. Um, we can even have uh, the insulation in there and if we just tease our, our drawing down we'll see that that information is there including the closers and the, the wraparound uh, closers for the, the plaster uh, the, the reveals with the windows and so on and all of that is just done automatically and here looking at the dimensions we'll see there's a situation where we're not only displaying the width of the door but we're also displaying the height if that's what we wish to do. So where does all this information come from? Uh, is it something that we can generate automatically? Is it something that we have to draw out each and every time? Well, for those not familiar with Caddy's AEC tools, it may be slightly surprising to learn that all of that information comes from here. So as we look down in plan, we'll see that we have just that representation there and in fact if I just take uh, a simple polyline here and let's just draw through there we'll just draw through the, the door and then go back to our sheet what we'll see is that is on every single viewport so what we're dealing with here is something that is completely live so we can modify it we can alter it we can move things around and so on and it will just change them in fact going back to our our drawing here if we were to pick our window and just move it along okay just take that look back at our, our drawings now we'll see that that has automatically taken account of that so how do we achieve that well what we have with the AEC tools are our objects uh, so we've got a, a wall object here which has got a style and we can choose how that object is represented and at the moment we're looking at it in a low detail representation whereas if we choose to we could look at it in other representations so say a medium detail and we'll remember from looking at our sheet that we then have more information in terms of the the makeup of the wall 
the architraves, uh, further information on the dimensions and so on. And then if we choose to look at it in high detail, we get the insulation now within the cavity and, and the, the full makeup of things. So this is just one, one drawing. And if we modify things, it accounts for everything. So just going back to our window there, if we were to move that window along, you'll see how the dimensions automatically update. If we choose to alter the properties of that window, so we've got uh, 1250, if we make that 1550, Okay, and then we just do a regen, we'll see that that updates too. So we're looking at something that is live, which potentially has massive uh, has a massive impact in terms of reducing the amount of work and also reducing the amount of mistakes that could possibly creep in when things are changed, because schemes do change, clients do change their minds, planners do wish things to be modified too. So how do we go about producing a drawing such as this. Well, let's just move along to some free space and we'll see that we have our build tools here. So we have our, our build tool. I'm just going to turn the uh, grid uh, to make it such that it's visible. We've got dots at the moment. I'm just going to, to change our view to a 3D wireframe view just so that we can see it. We can configure the grid. So if we configure our grid, you'll see that I've got it set to 225 and a snap spacing of 112.5. So it's working in millimetres here, but it does mean that I can snap onto points which aren't actually there as the grid, but it will snap to them anyway. So we'll go to our uh, wall drawing tools and we'll see that we have various walls in there. We've got the standard one, which is uh, for people who've already seen that the system may well be familiar with and uh, we have ones here I'm going to choose this particular wall style. So we have the height on there and then we're going to choose how we actually put this down. So I'm going to choose the left for the orientation uh, for the wall and we're going to put in a straight wall. You see you can put in curved walls too and it also has uh, the ability to automatically clean up with itself so as we turn corners and so on it will automatically make those junctions correct. So okay to that we'll just turn on our grid snap so the little icon down on the bottom here and we'll start drawing. So I'll just choose and here we are I'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see where we uh, where we are. Okay and we'll just uh, so we can snap not just to the uh, the grids, and then we don't need it to be uh, wholly uh, vertical uh, or anything like that. Let's just, just vary it a little, so we'll pick something uh, something like that. There we go. And then back along to here, and then back to join up. Then we can literally just press escape, and there is our, our drawing. And we're in high detail at the moment, so it shows all of those things. If we choose to go to low detail, sure enough, we get both of them in the low detail representation. We can add things like doors. So we'll go for a door, and again, we have our door style. So there's a standard one, I've got an external one here. We've got the height, the width, and we're putting it in by the center. So I'll literally just drop in our door here but that's not the way I want to orient it so I'll just literally click again and it will just toggle around until we get to the one that we that we wish. Once we're there we just do a right click option end and we could move on and put in another door. Before we do that let's put in a, another wall. We've got some walls here let's go back to the walls and we'll see the the representation changes whether we're looking at low detail or medium detail or high detail there. So we'll go for uh, a block wall. So this, you'll see the variable width is just greyed out. We're at 125, so that tells us how wide this is. Uh, we can have variable width or fixed width walls. Uh, and again, we have the automatic cleanup. So we can uh, say, yep, we're going to start here. We're going to use our grid snap again, and I'll just draw 
my wall and then there we go so I'll have that and then we'll just take that with the the grip there uh, just along um, uh, again using my grid snap so we'll, we'll take it along to there in fact, we'll just take it right through and we'll see that it will actually join up we can call in another door so uh, we can do that the door this time choosing the internal one now the external one has a, a sill on it the internal one we're just going to have it such that it uh, doesn't have a sill but we'll do an option end as we did before and we'll just put our door in there okay uh, we'll put in uh, a stud wall because we might want to uh, do some partitioning or something like that as well so again we could go for our wall and we could go for this time the stud wall or maybe let's choose the the right so if we go for the right or we'll okay that and we'll do our wall so here we are so we'll again go to our grid snap and we'll just start here and we'll go across to there and up to there we go to our medium detail representation and then all of a sudden we see that we have the, the representations in here uh, we go to high detail and we have that too and if we want to change the way these work well we can literally just move things across and we can just uh, pick them and just tweak them as we see fit so it's very quick very easy and when you have things like doors to put in as well well I just go for the door again choosing the internal door and I'll just pick here so in the middle of the studs okay and we'll see that we have that and it's actually introduced itself there we can make these larger or smaller we can move them uh, move them across so it just gives us the the capacity to to change whatever we wish to do and again high detail low detail and so on they're, they're all there whichever is the most appropriate for you at the time put in our windows so we'll go for our, our windows here and we literally just drop them in okay so we'll just drop them in here and Okay, so very, very quick, very easy. And if we choose to uh, move them along, as I say, we can just move them along without a, a, any difficulty. We can make them wider too. It'll, it's literally just a, a case of hitting the grips. So when we choose to put our dimensions in, uh, we just select a uh, wall. So I just pick on the wall uh, here, go for the uh, automatic dimensioning and then we'll choose the style that we want so I'll go the style that has the uh, the three possibilities there so we'll just come out so we're not going to uh, conflict with our, our wall there and then we can just add in from our dimension from the context menu so this is the tools that are appropriate to our, our dimensioning here so we'll add in uh, this wall and in fact that wall too so we'll pick this wall and we'll add in the dimensions so again selecting the style that we want to use and just put in a dimension I'll choose a wall add in the dimension so very quick very easy uh, not having to to go back and remeasure things and we can put them wherever uh, wherever we want and here so, so we'll pick uh, all across the top and again selecting the style that we wish and I just drop those in pick on our dimension add in the walls that we're uh, interested in and of course when we go for the other representations so we go for medium detail what we'll find is that we have our drawing there with all of the additional dimensions and so on. So how do we get that onto our, our sheet? Well, if we, we have our sheet here, so this is the 
this is our sheet with our existing existing drawings so if we just copy copy that sheet uh, just right click there go to copy sheet uh, we won't take the viewports with us so we just got we just got that we can go then to our model so we'll say okay let's just have a uh, create our viewport okay so we'll do a rectangular viewport and if we do something like that now we're going to put it on our sheet 1.1 we choose our viewport scale and you notice the annotation scale is there that we can modify so we'll just bring that in there are. and then if we copy that okay so we've got our three viewports they're slightly bigger than the sheet we could change uh, the sheet size here so we just right click and say okay let's just change the sheet up to uh, an A1 there we are. that just gives us a little bit more space but the essence of it is that what we do here is we choose for our viewport you see the level of detail that we want so if we just say okay let's make this low detail this one will be medium detail okay and then we can leave that one with high detail and that gives us exactly what we were after bef before with our different representations. So hopefully that's given us a, a little bit more insight into some of the ways that you can actually speed up the way you're able to produce information without sacrificing uh, any speed, without having to redraw things, with, with being able to modify and change your scheme to get it through to a point where it will actually be the, uh, the, the finished scheme. And something that's based on a model which also has the ability viewed as a 3D model so we can actually see what we have here we can start pulling rules on it we can start generating elevation from it and so on thank you for watching if you have any questions please drop us an email you'll see the email address here so sales at caddysoftware.com uh, our website's www.caddysoftware.com and uh, my name is Andrew Wheatley. You can reach me in the UK on the telephone number given there. Thanks for watching.